get going. Okay, welcome to this week's free Love for Humanity uh, call, event, whatever, class. Um, hi, Kristen. We've got Kristen and Peggy here. And then we also are live on Facebook, which I will jump onto now to tackle any questions or anything that comes up. And this is, this is one of my um, really, really, um, I don't know, really fun topics, this one. Um, I think for fun, some people, they probably wouldn't say that this topic is fun because um, thoughts are incredibly hard, hard to deal with. So this is why I think it's really important that we have this conversation uh, so that we can tackle um, thoughts that come up. I think most people have a bit of trouble with knowing what to do with thoughts and how to deal with them. And that is what this call is all about. Um, the topic is your thoughts are not who you are. So finding out how to deal with negative thoughts and how to get rid of them forever. Who wants that? I would like to say yes. We would like some of that. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you a little bit of a story around how this process has come about and then we will get into it um, and use some examples uh, either in the call here or on Facebook and um, see how people go with using this process. So I will start with um, the story and how it all came about this process. It um, came about through um, an awareness that I actually had. Um, I was listening to um, the Eckhart Tolle and Oprah podcast a couple of years ago now and uh, I'd read A New Earth but not really grabbed, but grabbed onto the concept. I don't know if you guys actually you know, have this happen when you do reading. Um, you read something and then you read it again and go, I don't remember reading that. Well, I'd read A New Earth but don't remember getting the concept of um, what Eckhart Tolle was talking about, uh, which he explained so beautifully in the Eckhart Tolle and Oprah podcast. We've got Coco playing around in the uh, streamers there. So, um, and so, oh, Coco. <laughs> so what Eckhart Tolle was talking about in the new earth is, uh, and it's just one little sentence which just made the world of difference. He said, uh, thoughts are just thoughts and they are not who you are. And that just went, wow. I just went, wow, because the thing is, is that when we have thoughts, we often think those thoughts are who we are and that we are thinking those thoughts and that they must be true. But to have that awareness that it's just a thought and it's just a thought, it's just instantly created a level of relief. Oh, my God, it's just a thought. So thank you. It's just a thought and that's all it is. And so that was an amazing awareness to have. And so I, for six months, I went through a process of just acknowledging thoughts. And it was, if you ever, ever want to have an amazing experience with thoughts, I would recommend highly that you do that, is that you just recognize thoughts when they come up and just saying, that's just a thought. Like, it's just a thought. It doesn't actually have to be true. It doesn't have to be who I am. Uh, and it's, it's an amazing experience to have because you are free then of your thoughts. Uh, and most people, most people I talk to actually want to have the experience of freedom or the feeling of freedom or whatever. Um, and this is a really great step if you want to get out of your head and to experience um, yourself having thoughts, um, observing yourself having thoughts, but then acknowledging that the thoughts are just thoughts is so freeing. So for about six months, I did that and it was super cool. I got to know my thoughts really, really well. Uh, and it ended up, you know, after about six months of just recognizing thoughts, I then realized that pretty much most of the thoughts um, that I had weren't really uh, what's the word? Like, they just weren't really helpful. <laughs> and the message I just then got through that awareness was, you know, in most cases, that's just the ego. And 
I was like, wow, so most of our thoughts are just the ego and the response was yes. Now, what I learned through those processes and learning about the ego is the ego is, is not what we think it is. It's our protective side. It's the side of us that is here to make sure that we survive on this planet. And so, of course, any of our thoughts that we have, especially when they're egoic thoughts, will be um, from a place of protection. So it'll always be watch out for this, be careful of that, this is this, this is that, blah, 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 and try and get you to um, kind of almost wrap yourself in cotton wool to not be hurt or harmed. And it was really interesting because then when I received the awarenesses that most of our thoughts were egoic thoughts, it actually comes from a very basic belief. And the basic belief is that we're not safe, that we're not protected, um, that we have to be careful. And I just recognize those thoughts as not really helpful. And I just thought, well, if most of our thoughts aren't helpful, then why are we listening to them? Um, and so the first step is awareness and acknowledgement. But I had one, and there was one particular morning where I was in my office, I was doing a heap of psychic readings and things like that. And they're incredibly hard to do when you don't know the people you're reading, um, which is okay because that means that pretty much the information that comes through has no pre preconceived bias good morning <laughs> there's no preconceived bias around them um, you're not going from information that you know and I say it's incredibly hard when you don't have anything and it's hard from an egoic point of view because uh, if you um, if you don't know anything about someone and you receive information about their family or you know, or anything like that. You don't even know if they have a family. You don't even know those things. So the head will create these stories of, well, you don't know these things or blah, blah. And it'll question the stuff that comes through and can actually drive you really crazy. So I was just, uh, I just went, went through another 80 readings that I was doing every week back then. And uh, as I finished doing them um, and trying to bypass all the thoughts just by recognising them, one um, one thing all of a sudden happened and I was sitting right, oh, actually, no, I wasn't sitting right here. I actually left here and went into the bathroom and I was sitting on the toilet and I remember sitting there going and I got this thought coming through that said, you are hopeless. You are hopeless. Then it said, you have no idea what you're doing. Um, you may as well quit and... Um, go and get a job because you have no idea what you're doing and uh, everything that you've just done is wrong and incorrect. And I was sitting there on the toilet going, oh my God, because I forgot that they were just thoughts. I thought they were true and real. And as I was sitting there, this horrible feeling came over me and I was just... I was spiralling and I think if anyone kind of has the experience of um, not being able to recognise thoughts and knowing that these thoughts are um, coming through when you have an awareness of a thought, I was just sitting there because I had believed the thoughts and what they were saying. I just was shaking my head. I was feeling sick. I was just saying, I may as well. I may as well follow these thoughts. I may as well just quit. I may as well just stop doing what I'm doing. Um, and I may as well stop. And I just kept spiraling, spiraling, sitting on the toilet, spiraling out of control. And all of a sudden, the awareness came through that they were just thoughts. And I just felt instant relief. I was like, oh my God, they don't have to be true. I was just amazed. I was just like, oh my God, they were just thoughts. And of course, they're thoughts from the egoic mind, which don't have to be true. And I was so happy. I was so happy that they were just thoughts. And I guarantee you, if any of you just recognize these thoughts when they come up and just notice them, you will, and notice them as the egoic mind just creating a thought to help and protect you. Just know that. And as soon as you know that, all of a sudden, 
the the weight of it the heaviness of it everything else just goes so i was just sitting on the toilet i was instantly relieved i was like oh thank god that's not they're actually not true it's just my guide mind creating those thoughts but i could kind of see those thoughts were floating around in the distance <laughs> and i'm like oh this i know that they're not true but they're still kind of floating around and i don't know what to do with them and instantly i received a phrase which said that the thoughts are just the ego and call them out and then to take a couple of deep breaths and so i just said okay so that thought's just the ego and i'm calling it out and i took a couple of deep breaths and instantly the thought just disappeared i'm like okay that's interesting so i did it for all the thoughts that i had and i called them out and they all disappeared and to date this was a couple of years ago now. To date, they have not came come back. So I thought this is pretty cool. So I did about six months of case studies and I had some beautiful clients come online with me and I wanted to test to see if it worked for them. And it did and it was an amazing process that I used, which then progressed into other processes that I um, use today, especially through consciousness and awareness. And I remember um, even more so a couple more years before I uh, was really wanting to dive deep into like spiritual practices. I really wanted to um, be more spiritual. I wanted to get more spiritual um, than I was. And I remember it was, it was around a New Year's, New Year's Day when I was actually sitting there looking at the year coming up and I just really wanted to be more spiritual. And I sat down and I just said to the universe, I said, what is it that I can do? Like with this year coming up, with everything that we're going to be doing, what is it that I can do to be more spiritual? And the, the word that came through was it's consciousness. And again, I was instantly relieved because I'm like consciousness, like I don't have to do anything. It's just what's going on within here. It's consciousness and awareness um, and going deeper into what's going on within us. And so when I got that awareness, again, I was instantly relieved because I can do that. We can do, we can do this. This To be more spiritual, you just have to be more conscious. And I was like, cool. And so since then, again, I've been running masterminds and case studies and um, all that sort of thing around consciousness, awareness, thoughts and processes and it's really interesting when you get to know what how things work within you and um, how things progress but when you shift consciousness and when you shift awareness um, and through acknowledgement um, and hello <laughs> um, through acknowledgement and awareness what actually happens is you shift into a new way of being you transcend and I'm seeing a lot of people at the moment saying, well, you know, I want to get rid of something or I want to um, change something or whatever. And the message that keeps coming through is simply through awareness um, and consciousness shifts. These naturally do happen. And so this is what I want to talk about today is negative thoughts and the thoughts that we think are who we are, but they're not necessarily who they are, who we are. So I um, recently, only just recently, this is the most beautiful pussycat in the world, just recently I had um, received a message around this consciousness work and um, the, the egoic thoughts. And for a couple of years now, I've been using the phrase, you know, those thoughts are just the ego and I'm calling them out. But I wanted to um, start uh, expanding this work with um, maybe people who don't really understand what the ego is and also uh, the um, like little kids and things like that. And I thought, well, they're not going to really understand what the ego is and what calling it out means. So then I got the phrase, and this is another phrase, and I'll get you guys to write this phrase down which is saying that when you have an awareness of a thought and if it's a negative thought um, in particular, what you can say and say this phrase is you say that thought is not who I am. 
um, and it's just a thought. So the thought is, it's just a thought and it's not who I am. And then you take three deep breaths. And what happens is that when you take three deep breaths, you're actually shifting your consciousness from your human awareness into your body. And if anyone's been doing some work with me in the last couple of years, it's all about um, connecting to soul wisdom uh, and our inner wisdom, knowing our pathway and our purpose and following the guidance that we get every single day from within ourselves um, as a, a spiritual being. And when you take those three deep breaths, you're dropping from your head into your body, which is where your soul wisdom lives. And you can then ask yourself, okay, if it's not, if it's just a thought and it's not who I am, well, who am I? And every time you recognize that a, that a thought is just a thought and it's not who I am, you are getting close to, closer and closer to who you actually are. Now, not only will that thought never come back again, and I guarantee you, I've done plenty of years of study of this, not only will you never have that negative thought again, um, you, because you're reprogramming the neural pathways by doing this process, but because you're dropping into your body and you're dropping into what I call your soul wisdom, you are getting closer to the person you really are. And the person who you really are is an infinite being. It's a um, expansive, uh, infinite uh, being who through doing this work, you will find if you drop into your body and you don't get an answer, it's what I call the nothing. It's the neutrality. Um, and that's actually the first step into the everything. And it's hard to understand until you do this experience, um, until you do it. So I do recommend just practice it. The first step is awareness of the thought and going, it's just a thought. The second thing is the thought is just a thought. It's not who I am. Taking the three deep breaths and dropping into your body and then getting used to listening to what happens when you do that. Now, at first you may get nothing and that's okay. And I always do recommend that, that you make it that it's okay that you get nothing when you're in there because the nothing is the expansion into the everything and you transcend this human. And I'll say this human brain, transcending this human brain is actually okay into soul wisdom because this is infinite wisdom. And what happens is that if we stay in this human brain, we are only in the programming that this computer has within it. When we go into soul wisdom, we have access to our soul experiences and our soul pathway. So it's really important to first off recognize when thoughts are just thoughts. Then secondly, just say they are not who I am and take the three deep breaths. And then thirdly, dropping into because three deep breaths helps you to drop into the soul wisdom and then just asking, who am I? What do I need to know? And then just being quiet and seeing what pops up. And this is where you will transcend the programming that you've had, because a lot of us don't really know what programming we have had from upbringing or from um, hereditary, um, you know, lineage or anything like that we don't know what we've picked up and as i always say 95 of the of percent of the stuff that's in your head you are unconscious or subconscious about so this helps you to become more consciously aware of what's going on in this program this computer program that's in your head but then helps you to connect to the soul wisdom so the other thing i'm going to talk about around thoughts um, and just to bring you into up to speed around thoughts and where they also come from yes they come from um, the egoics mind the egoic mind and the mind that is just wanting to protect you so again we don't want to make negative thoughts because when we make negative thoughts um, bad or wrong, what actually happens is they they then end up um, we end, end up creating a level of resistance around them. So the saying "what you resist persists" is a hundred percent true when we make a thought negative or bad. And so uh, when you notice that there's a thought coming up, don't make it bad or wrong. 
um, because you'll find that you'll continually have that thought coming up time and time again because you don't like it and you have resistance around it. So the ego's role is just to protect you. It is here to protect you. It's here to help you. Now, because it gives you a negative thought, don't make it bad or wrong. It's just a thought. And acknowledge it. That's thank you, ego, for creating that thought. But I do have a choice um, whether I want to believe it or not. And it's you that decides what meaning is placed on the thought. So don't have any resistance. Don't, don't hate the thought. Don't make it negative or bad or wrong. Because don't be surprised if it keeps popping up. If you just acknowledge it as just a thought, then it's just a thought and you can transcend it into something else. The other thing too is um, some of the thoughts that you might have, um, and in particular uh, thoughts that may be fearful of the future, um, worried about what's going to happen, things like that, are usually what we call the collective thoughts. Now, collective thoughts come from the collective ego. <laughs> it's like the collective thoughts are the fact that we are all connected. We, um, we do, even though people don't and are not aware of it, we are all collectively connected. Um, and we all telepathically speak to each other. Now, we don't use it yet consciously, and down the track we will use it consciously, but I can guarantee you that you are picking up on everyone else's thoughts just by being a human because we naturally pick up on each other's thoughts. It's, it's simple telepathic communication. We all have access to it. Plants and animals are consciously aware of it and that's how they communicate. But humans, we are transcending into communicating more telepathically, um, but we are not aware of it yet. Um, so I'm going to share with you that a lot of the thoughts that you might have are collective, especially when you're talking about pandemics and um, end of the world stuff. You know, you're picking up on other people's thoughts. You don't even need to watch the news. You don't even need to go on Facebook. You will be picking up the energy that is going along because thoughts create energy and thoughts are like, like think about you're like a radio transmit, transmitter. And so if someone else is on a similar frequency to you, they will naturally pick up the thoughts that you're having and vice versa. So this is again why we need to just be aware that thoughts are just thoughts and they're not who you are because you could be simply picking up thoughts from someone else, which is happening a lot right now, especially when there's fear or anxieties out there. Um, and if you are vibrating at a frequency that is on a level of fear or fear or fear or um, or anything like that, you will naturally pick up um, other thoughts of fears or anxieties. And so don't be surprised if you do get a lot of thoughts coming through to make you more fearful or more anxious. It's because you're picking up each other's thoughts and we're all sharing them with each other. So we need to be aware again of the thoughts and to cut that process off simply by acknowledging them and saying that they are not who I am. They could be a collective thought. Um, and also, Thoughts are usually the programming that we have received through upbringing, through school, through um, learning and experiencing the world. Um, growing up, don't do this, don't do that, that's bad, that's wrong, whatever it is, will be a program in your head which will repeat and will go on repeat time and time and time and time again. So you know the saying, you know, especially with parenting, um, whatever you say to a child will be its inner voice for the rest of its life. Um, and so this is where we need to be consciously aware as parents in bringing up children is that this inner voice that each person has is usually the parent's voice that will keep reminding them. Now, again, it's from a place of safety and protection, um, but it then is coming from a place of I am not safe or I need protection. And um, as infinite beings, because that is what we are, uh, we um, have to start moving from a place of protection, survival, uh, into uh, I'm going to have an amazing experience here and let me see where it takes me. So I'm going to jump in now um, and ask anyone who's live on Facebook or anyone here on Zoom 
if there is um, anyone who wants to use this scenario, this video, if you want to actually uh, be a guinea pig today, if you've got some thoughts that you have um, that we can use as an example, just pop your hand up or let me know if you do want to be used as a guinea pig here for us to show everyone how it works. Um, I'm more than happy um, and if you do actually have any thoughts that you would like to transcend and I say transcend because transcending is better than changing or getting rid of because changing and getting rid of comes from a place of resistance and what you resist persists so that thing will naturally not want to go away. Um, so I'm putting it out there to anyone who wants to use any particular thoughts that they may have had or they have right now or any even any thoughts that you know you have that um, you want to transcend, let me know and we will use you as a guinea pig. Um, Peggy, you're jumping on, so I will unmute you now. If you'll let me. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hello. You're such a beautiful guinea pig for me every week. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Oh, okay. okay, Peggy. It's it, it is fun to do and I'm so grateful that you're here. So, um, and anyone on Facebook, if you've got any thoughts um, that you guys want to transcend, let us know and, um, and we'll use you as well. So Peggy, um, thank you for jumping in today. What thoughts or thoughts do you have that you recognize that you would um, like to transcend? Um, I think that one of the thoughts that I've had lately is that um, not enough, um, not enough of something, whether it be not enough as a, a friend, a sister, um, a worker, um, because of all of the things that are going on in the world right now. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the thoughts that are going on around the world at the moment for you. Uh, around the world, did you say? Yeah, your thoughts around what's going on, about what's going um, on right now. Well, I guess I can give a, a quick thing here. Um, I am a state employee for state government in the state that I live in. And um, I am required to be an essential employee, even though I work in IT, but I'm still an essential employee. And um, we have had some things happen where we are being mandated to do testing um, and have no choice in it. If we don't do it, we will lose our jobs. And so it's a, a lot of the stuff that I feel with this is that I feel that I am losing some of my ability to say, to make a choice, I guess. And so that makes me not feel like enough because I'm not obviously enough to stand up for that, so. Yeah. And so would the thought be that I'm not enough, do you think? Or is it more that I'm um, losing losing my freedom or my ability to do something? Well, it, it, it's probably all of them combined, I'm thinking, but it, it might be more like um, losing, losing the, the choice and the freedom to do it and then when you share with others who might not uh, concur, then they're like, well, you don't care. Well, no, I do care because I do care about everybody. And, and you know, everything's been running the gamut from both sides, all sides of the, all around, around the world. Everybody's got issues with different things. And, um, and it's just triggered so many, um, so many emotions for everybody, including me. So. Great. Fantastic. And um, you, you do know what to do with those emotions because you were uh, someone who we played around with emotions last week. So you can um, definitely breathe into those emotions and, and get them to talk to you. But for mm -hmm. this exercise, um, we're going to use the thought that I'm losing my choice or choices. Um, how does that sound? That sounds fine. Okay. So I'm going to get you to look at that. Now I know that it's a reality and this is probably a really great exercise because the thought you're having is the reality that you're experiencing, right? Yes, that's correct. So this is fantastic because I do get a lot of people saying, well, Kim, 
like, how can you say that that's just a thought because that's my current reality? However, let's just see what happens when we do this exercise to how you see things after this. Um, I don't know. I don't know because um, I'm just as much of a guinea pig in this work as you are. And um, I love being the observer of what actually does happen. Uh, so let's just see the reality that you are experiencing now. And it's, I want to show that our thoughts create our reality. So what an amazing example. Thank you. So thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to get you to repeat after me and let's see what then happens with this thought. So I'm going to get you to say, I'm losing my choices. I am losing my choices. Is just a thought. Is just a thought. And it's not who I am. And it is not who I am. Now I want you to take three deep breaths. And as you take those three deep breaths, I want you to allow your awareness to go from your head into your belly, which is where you're breathing into. Um, and it's great when you are saying, I'm losing my choices because I do actually have a telepathic awareness of, of um, what's going on in someone else's head. And I could hear your egoic mind going and arguing, being extremely powerful, saying, but I am losing my choices. Don't tell me I'm not losing my choices. <laughs> I was getting really angry and annoyed. So just keep breathing into it. And it's just a thought. It's not who I am. Take three deep breaths. And now I'm going to ask you the question of who are you? And tell me what what comes through when I ask that question after the three deep breaths? Who am I? Yes. What sense yeah. do you get of uh, who you are after those three deep breaths? Still a crazy dog lady, right? <laughs> you can be that. <laughs> uh, I will, I will I, write that down. <laughs> I, couldn't use it. I couldn't resist that. That kind of came up. That was kind of a, you know, me thing. So. Um, I am still who I am, I guess. Um, yes. yes. So, so what's, so, so what's then just happened is you've changed. I don't like using the word transcending. You've transcended from, you know, someone who's losing their choices into I am who I am and a crazy dog lady as well. So it's just funny. <laughs> um, you can even go further into getting more information around that, which would be, um, looking at the thought, because you've just done that process, looking at the thought of losing my choices, um, what comes through now when you look at that? Um, actually, um, that there are choices. Well, and um, and, and I, um, I have choices that I can make to um, stay where I'm at mm -hmm. and just deal with it. Mm -hmm. Or two, I can look for a different job within the government system, or I can retire. <laughs> Lots of my options, you know. So there are choices. So it's just literally, that, like, so literally, what you have done is changed your reality to I don't have choices to I have many choices. Mm -hmm. Well done. There you go. That's how it works. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, my love. That was a great example. Um, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so just remember that it's just, it's just a thought. It's not who I am. And take those three deep breaths and you can just have these amazing conversations with yourself. Who am I? And also what is, what is really true? And you'll find out that there is so many opportunities that can come through once you transcend a thought. So that's us for today. Thank you, Peggy, for playing with us. That was an amazing yeah. example because it's great to see how our reality can change through simply acknowledging and playing with our thoughts. Um, I do urge everyone to continue um, doing this and practicing it and also sharing your thoughts um, from actually doing this because it is it's newish work. And uh, thanks, Kristen. She said nice. <laughs> I know. I thought I was waiting to her. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are beautiful. Do those guys, they always do this. That's for you guys. Yeah. It is yeah. This, this little love, love. I've got my little love heart here. Love, love, love. Love for humanity. Love, love for, for humanity. Love for humanity. Yes. Yeah. So 
Um, anyone else who wants to um, be guinea pigs in these calls um, as these examples, because uh, I can only use examples to show how it works. And so I'm so grateful, Peggy, for you turning up. We've got Kristen. We've also got Belinda in um, on Facebook. So thanks, guys, for turning up. Jump in every week. We're here for free every week to play around with all these concepts that come through. When I say concepts that come through, the universe talks to me and tells me what we can do about stuff on Earth. So um, that's what Love for Humanity is all about. About and just sharing everything with each other um, because if it works then it might work for someone else too and uh, so give it a go and uh, come and jump in every week if you can or join us on Facebook live every week and uh, we will keep sharing all the new information around the next steps for humanity um, sharing love for humanity and uh, also if you want to do any work with me in groups. We do have our protege groups and our professional groups um, as well. But here, um, thank you so much for turning up and uh, sharing your story, Peggy, and your experiences and um, everyone else for witnessing us. And I will see you guys next week. Love you, bye. <laughs> bye.